How you doing? It's Ryan with 1075 Emergency Vehicles. What we're looking at today is this 2020 Chevy Tahoe that we built for the Bergen County Regional SWAT Team. Um, so, off the bat, this vehicle is built with sound off signals, a blueprint 3.0 electrical system. Starting looking up top, we have a sound off signal M-Power in dual color configuration. We have a passenger side spotlight installed so that the passenger can operate the spotlight and utilize the Noptic thermal imaging camera that we've also installed. What we've done up front is we have a Weston push bumper. We have four sound off signal N-Force cutouts. These are in tri-color. On the front of the push bumper, we have sound off signal M powers, total of six in dual color. Uh, all the front lights along with the light bar come on with a white steady feature to give them ample scene lighting in nighttime situations. On the side of the push bumper, we have sound off signal N forces in tri-color also with the white function. All of our white side lights will also come on uh, with the scene light function when you press your left or right alley feature and also along with the corner of the light bar. Our fog lights have are in dual color. They have the white override for the takedown also. And then we've also installed a plug and play headlight flasher from Sound Off. This is on park kill. So with the vehicle you're currently in park mode so it's a slower pattern to give ample lighting but not be as um, as distracting as some other patterns could be. Um, so right now the vehicle is in full sync mode so that everything is alternating the way that we've designed it with the customer so that they have complete coverage at all times. When the vehicle is in a drive mode, uh, we're going to mix up the patterns on the lights, the light bar, the um, push bumper, and give it a little more aggressive feel for our response mode. Uh, this also feature, features a low frequency siren in it to help clear intersections. Okay, so taking a look at the side of the vehicle, you can see that we've matched the existing fleet's graphics to match the other two vehicles that are currently in service. Uh, up front, we have sound off signal intersector mirror lights that are in tri-color. We have sound off signal M powers on the running boards that are in tri-color with the white override. And then we have dual deck grill end forces in the rear side window. Uh, one thing that we've done to help not blind the officer when they get out, uh, we've done the rear corner of the light bar on the rear shutoff, and that allows them to get out of the vehicle and not necessarily blind themselves with the light bar. Okay, so now taking a look at the back, you can see the graphics that we've done with their existing patchwork. Up top, we have a sound off signal eight mod M power Chimzo bracket. This is in tri-color. So each model is red and blue, and then it has white for additional scene light function. Uh, we're not currently flashing the number two and three color just because the amount of lighting that's on the back of it. Uh, they will turn into flash mode when they are in response mode. On the pillars, we've installed sound off signal four inch M-Powers in tri-color also with the white override. We're flashing the uh, parking lights via the blueprint system also. And then we have a dual color sound off signal hideaway in the reverse light. Uh, they are flashing red only. The white is there only for reverse and the rear scene feature. And then we have on the bumper and on the rear license plate, four inch sound off signal M-Powers in tri-color that also do the white override and the reverse light function. So now with the back of the vehicle open, uh, you can see that we've installed four sound off signal M powers down below. They were concerned with affecting their night vision. So now the lights are down below. They have plenty of coverage if a vehicle were to approach them from the rear. Uh, and then up top for scene lighting, we've installed three Technique four inch round scene lights that are in a white red combination. So they have control over each color and are able to shut that off. Uh, in the back, we've installed a custom weapons cabinet that we designed for them. Uh, what we've done is we've designed the cabinet to accept the Centina upper mesh screen and then give us electronics compartment behind it so that we can mount all the radio chassis, the inverter charger, and the modem for the vehicle. On the side, we've installed a heater so that way if the vehicle is going to be parked for an extended period of time, they just plug the shoreline in and they now have a way to keep the interior cabin warm in the winter time. We've installed two Santa Cruz gun locks on top here and then they have a concealed release button uh, inside the vehicle. Um, the drawers feature 
simplex locks. We've designed the drawer to fit their existing equipment. So this drawer needs to fit um, almost ammo size case units um, and they need to be a certain size. And then we were able to bring the remainder of the drawer open to the other side to give them more storage. So now we're looking at the vehicle. Uh, we're gonna go over the slide position of the vehicle. Um, this is slide one. So all that we have is our rear facing lights are on. None of our side or front warning lights are on. <clears throat> slide two is gonna add our front lower and side warning lights, keeping the top of the light bar off. So that way if they are working in front of the vehicle, the light bar may not be blinding them as much and they're able to just knock it down in instances of uh, snow or rain where they may be causing too much flashback into the windshield from the light bar. And then mode three is just adds in the light bar as we showed you before. Everything stays the same. Okay, so now what we're in, we're in our drive and response mode, level three. You can see that the pattern of the light bars changed along with all the additional body lights of the vehicle. And then as soon as the vehicle will be put into park, everything slows down immediately and sinks back up. And back into drive, you can see that our wigwags are now active. The pattern in our light bars changed. The pattern in the rear of the truck has changed also. You can see we're in drive mode, so we, if you're concerned about safety, um, when somebody's following you, instance, you can see that when we press the brake, we stop some of the warning lights from flashing and make them go steady red to keep somebody from also <clears throat> seeing that you're turning and being prepared for you to make a stop. Um, what we'll go over now is we'll shut the warning lights off. We'll go over the left arrow so you can see that the arrow stick in the uh, chimsel along with the light bar are synced. And we have a three press system. So first press does left, second press does right, third press does center out. Uh, you can see our rear scene function in the back it turns all of our rear lights on. So now you can see our takedown switch. Turns all of our white scene lights on, and then our left alley turns our left scene lights on, and then our right alley does the same. And then we can show you the cruise feature of the light bar to help mark the scene if they don't want to have all their warning lights on. And then what we'll show is if you're in the drive mode, we can actually dim the entire car. So pressing that, we can bring our lights down to about a 50% output. And this is also to help with scene safety. So if you don't, you want all your lights on, you want them flashing, but you don't want them blinding everybody that's coming around, you can still be very visible with the dim feature. Okay, so taking a look at the back of the vehicle, uh, you can see the back of the cabinet. We've installed all of our electronics. We've got a radio chassis. We have a cradle point modem, our battery charger. We have our distribution for our 110. Um, and then we have a shelf up top to give them more storage and then protect the electronics uh, when they throw their gear in the back. And then we have our main distribution panel underneath the second row seat where our main central controller is and then our breakout boxes for all of our light bars along with our power distribution. Okay, so taking a look at the console that we have for this vehicle, uh, this is one of our standard designs. Um, what it has is a uh, larger area for equipment mounting. It has a small map pocket and then it's got a face plate to mount your uh, portable chargers or any other equipment that you may want to stick there. Um, what we've done differently with this is uh, we've brought their USB and uh, audio in for the factory radio over and then we've given them the same style switch that we put in the back of the vehicle for the dome lights that we mounted to the overhead. So they have uh, white for the interior lights and then they have a red override for the uh, nighttime situation and then we have their four radio chassis heads. On the side of our console, we've brought over um, their docking station for the vehicle along with their keyboard, and we've installed that onto a hint mount that allows them to move the keyboard between the driver and the passenger side because they do ride with two people in the vehicle. And then up top, you can see we've brought the blueprint controller up top along with two of the speakers for the 05 Motorola heads.
Thank you.